Sorry, one of your favorites here. Yes, it is. Dear Crossing. Oh, God. 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 Oh,
Levi. 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 Levi.
have some joys to share. We just shared some, we just shared some birthday joys. Mm -hmm. So what else do we have? Well, the update on Bill Webster, that's a joy. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, Marlene's been keeping Steve in, in the, the know of what's going on. Bill's surgery went fabulously. Everything was good. He, they were able to take him off the ventilator the next day. And then they had him up walking. She sent a video of Bill walking. So he's doing so well. And they, those two are two of the most Christian people I know. Their faith is so strong. When they were looking at this, the surgery coming up, Bob called Bill and was, you know, we're, we're praying for you. Bill was, that's that's what I, that's what he does. He was, God is will take care of me. So it, it's just wonderful. And so Marlene's resting a little easier every single day. It's a long haul. Yeah, it's a very long haul. Once he comes home, he can't lift anything over a five-pound bag of sugar. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. If that. So keep him in your prayers, but it's it's just a blessing how well he's doing. Marley says we're not out of the woods left. Yeah, so keep no. praying. No, yeah. Keep praying. Sure okay. do it. Yes. So my daughter will be 50 a week from today, and my prayer to her is she'll have at least uh, a year of restorative. Well, we can sing to her next Sunday. You can bring her. <laughs> I said you can bring her next Sunday. And we'll sing to her personally. Look, I hope to be up there, but if not, you might see me down here. So, thank you. Who else? Who else has a joy? I have a joy. I have a concern. I forgot my hearing aid, so I don't have to worry about it falling out. That's a joy. The concern is I may not hear it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yes, that is. Do you read lips? They can get you in trouble sometimes. Yeah, she does. All right. How about concerns? What's on your hearts? We have several that have lost loved ones uh, in this community. We had a lady that uh, fell outside Charlie John's store yesterday and stayed there quite a while, uh, laying in the it was not really nice outside and uh, nope. had nothing to do with me, but uh, it would have years ago. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so nope, they got her out of there finally. Yeah, okay. Wow. So they did come. The EMT. They did, finally. Nobody was able to help her until the end of uh, There were an awful lot of people standing around. I would think they would have taken a coat off or something, right. and uh, right. you know, but it wasn't up to me at this point. Um, yeah, after 22 years on the ambulance, um, they didn't think we knew anything, so I thought, well, oh, huh. well that's too bad. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yep. do you know, is she doing okay? I don't know that. Okay. But at least they went down the road. That was a start. That was a help. Took them a while, but they finally left. In the afternoon, like around you know, three, four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were right. going through. They had a big walleye tournament at Lansing's yesterday. Uh huh. Okay. And I. Through. I bet that would have been oh, yeah. going by. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We were coming back from bowling tournament at that time, mm -hmm. and we saw the ambulance go by, light, yep. lights and oh, yes. siren. And it's a good thing because I almost got hit three times trying to come through there. People are crazy drivers. Oh, I well, uh -huh. But I saw the ambulance mm -hmm. go through. Yep. Huh. Yeah. Just an FYI for you folks, that a person laying at 30 degrees on the ground, 30 degrees outside, you only have eight minutes before hypothermia I know. starts. And that's to I was to see how, how long is it doesn't take, take very there? long at all. In 30 degree water, you only have four minutes before mm -hmm. hypothermia mm -hmm. starts to set in. So getting them warm is a vitally important thing. If not enough, then you go to I had a joy that uh, I was able to visit Anne last Sunday. Took her over uh, the ashes. We went through the whole service over there. I, nice. I did a double service. <laughs> so Anne was very appreciative. She can hear, not well yet, but she can it's hear. It's still the better than two yes. Tube in one ear, and she's going to follow up with the other one. So she looks great. She good. looks great. So good news. Good, good news. Yeah. Not that this is a, a praise, but I just wanted to share. I'm hoping that you all got your. Valentine's Day. Yeah. 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 So I, I, there's a story behind those cards. Oh, 
many years ago, um, uh, a lady at our church, Gloria, <laughs> Gloria, um, oh gosh, Dykeman, thank you. Um, she passed away, and she was a dear lady, um, always loved Jesus Loves Me, and she, they asked us if we wanted to come. She, the, the whole bottom of her house was like books, 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 books. Uh -huh. So we went through stuff. Well, there was, she had these little um, things that, you know, it was like a whole roll, you know, it, it twined around, and it was those Valentine's Day uh -huh. cards. And I've had them, and I've had them, wow. and I've used them once in a while, but I thought, you know what? I need to get rid of them. Because <laughs> <laughs> trying I'm to... Losing them on us. And yes, and I thought, I know what I can do with them. So they were dear to my heart yeah. with Gloria, and so I shared they a little bit. They were great. I to get rid of them. <laughs> yeah, that, that was wonderful. I told Bonnie that, yeah, Susie Sunshine's out of uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> if you couldn't read the writing after a while, it was getting... <laughs> But I'm hoping everyone got them that I got very much appreciated. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that Gloria would oh. have been so happy oh. to have oh. you used that way. Oh, yes. yeah. She is another strong uh -huh. Christian woman. Oh, yes. I, I knew her well also. So we thank you for doing that. That's that's wonderful the way it you is. all of you in this church reach out to each other in, in various ways. Just don't think you're getting one for every house. <laughs> All right, uh, anybody, anybody do have uh, some other concerns to share before we get the Just all the sickness going around, it just uh, continues to yeah. uh, make everybody healthy. Oh, one other quick joy, though. It's such a joy to hear babies yeah. sound. I think it's <laughs> okay. I just I think love it. it. Yes. They never have to worry that we don't like having yeah. Oh, no, <laughs> we love the baby sounds. Great We're stuff. glad to see the family. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, our precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the joys you can share in this church, and, and we thank you because it's all from you, all the good joys and happiness and love that comes from you. We know that. We know that. We feel that. We even know it even more during this term, this Lenten season. But we know it all year round. Lord, we've not only shared joys, but we've shared some concerns, some concerns for all the illness of those around, concerns for those that have lost loved ones. It's not all a happy season for everyone. So it's a season of uh, understanding and, and grief and coming to you with, with not only joys, but with concerns. Lord, we come to you this morning with our own concerns for our country, for our world, for all the violence that's happening everywhere. And we don't know what to do except come to you, but that's all we need to do because it's all under your, under your watch. We trust you to deal with it as you promised for the good of all, the, all who believe in you and love you. So Lord, we're here trusting in you. We pray for our country, our leaders in our country, in our state, in our towns, we pray for our own selves as we lead our own families. Lord, give us guidance that we need to follow. Let us know the path that we must take. Lord, we pray for our schools and our churches. We pray for, for your action in everything we do and everything that anybody does. Lord, we, we reach out to you for guidance that you would Bring this country back to a country that really does trust and believe in you. I know we pray for the concerns right here in this own sanctuary. This is a very sanctuary. Concerns that are in our hearts that we don't want to share with each other. Maybe they're too close and personal. But Lord, you know what they all are. So Lord, thank you for being with us all in our deepest, deepest concerns. Now we come to you with the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and the glory. And now it's our chance to give back.
to fill fill our souls with. with Do we have a children's play? Okay. Oh. You got it, too. You got it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, we're going to fight over it. Uh, you think they're not going to stand in the way of the world? I know. So before I start, we have to hand these out. Oops, oops. Did I? Got it, boy. You are each going to get three. But people kept coming in, so that's good. So, I count, of course, I counted them this morning. Of course, I did. Thank you. I got two. Everybody gets two. You need more? Oh. Everybody's getting two. Did they all get two? Yeah. You might get a few more. There, for you and your father. Here, take two more. So. Oh, there you uh, go. Uh, you know it's back. Oh, geez, you can't do that. So I tried to memorize it and it kind of. Come on, we'll remember it. Oh, <laughs> right. So, Christmas time, I met with Carol and Denny and we had Chinese food, yum yum. And she gave me a gift, and of course, one of the gifts was these kisses. And again, I thought, I need to get rid of some things because I'll eat the whole bag. So I, I had a thought, and I was like, ooh, I know what I can do with them. So when you unwrap, you can unwrap one, and you can share the other one with a friend, or you can eat the other one, whatever you want to do. So we're, I'm going to unwrap mine. And these are called candy cane kisses. And the red stripe is a power, a painful, but a powerful reminder that Jesus shed his blood to pay for our sins. By his suffering and death, but we are healed. In fact, we were made pure and new and white like the nice snow. I came in, I was the first one to walk up the steps and there was nothing, no footprint. So it was like white and pure. And just like the white on your Hershey kiss. Also, these kisses have a minty reminder, <coughs> if you have minty flavor, and the strength of that flavor reminds us that even Jesus, even though he had a tough and a life and death, he was strong and powerful in it. Also think how refreshing it is to know God and faith in Jesus gives us a renewed hope and freshens our spirit, just like the minty flavor freshens us. And it's a fresh breath. So I'm going to eat mine because I probably have coffee breath. <laughs> so, amen. That was my message. Look at me, one. Would you like me to give you a I would. prayer? I would. Yes, Sorry, please. now that I'm eating. <laughs> That's all right. You can do a chocolate bro. <laughs> Dear Lord, we bless Steve as he shares your word with us. And as our own Hershey kiss reminds us that faith in Jesus gives us renewed hope and freshens our spirit. May Steve's message give us renewed hope and freshens our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, thank you. Not more, I have more. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm going to eat them all. Do you feel the spirit? <laughs> I do. Uh, happy first Sunday in Lent. Let's start with the refresher course. I know most of you know what this is all about, but I'm going to uh, repeat it just in case you do, because we may need it, so we never know. But in general, we should understand that Lent is an important season in the Christian church to observe. It's when we make work of humbling ourselves and drawing closer to God as spiritual preparation for Easter. For us in the Methodist tradition, Lent begins on Ash Wednesday and ends on Saturday before Easter. 
So this year, it, it ended on uh, March, that was March 30th, and Easter is the, uh, oh, or no, uh, yes, March 30th, yes. That ended on March 30th, and Easter begins on, what? March 31st. So the actual day of Easter is determined. How do you know when Easter's going to fall? I know we all say it's going to be 30 days after one. But, but where's Easter? How does Easter come out? You know that? I didn't know that until I did some It is determined by the March equinox. The, the sky, I guess you could say it's determined by God. Actually, Easter, God determines when we're going to celebrate Easter. After the full moon that falls on or after March 21st is, is when Easter falls. That's Sunday that comes after that full moon after March 31st. So you don't know what, uh, why that last 40, last 40 days. The 40, uh, it rep it's represented by two episodes episodes of scripture and testing in the Bible. Jesus spent how many days in the wilderness? 40, 40, days. 40 days. And the exodus out of Egypt took how many years? 40 years. 40 years. So that's where the 40 comes from. The temptation of Jesus to, to 40 days of fasting and uh, the Israelites took Trip through the earth, through the through the desert, but the number of forty holds a number of uh, special significances in the Bible. For example, during the flood, it rained for forty days. Moses fasted on the mountain for forty days and nights before God gave him the Ten Commandments. Do you remember that? The spies spent forty days in the land of Canaan. And the prophet Elijah traveled for 40 days and nights to reach the mountain of God in Sinai. So those are things that you may not tie to 40 days, but there they are. Maybe you're wondering about the significance of the ashes that we celebrated on Ash Wednesday. The imposition of ashes is always on the Wednesday, 40 days before Easter. Not counting Sundays, of course. Sundays are not counted because they are recognized as a mini Easter, a mini Easter celebration, so we don't count Sundays. The ashes of this holiday symbolize two main things, death and repentance. For example, when man was formed, ashes are equivalent to dust. The human flesh is composed of dust. The biblical reference for that is in Genesis 2-7, where it states, then, the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And the other part of the, our earthly existence, when the human corpse uh, decomposes, it returns to dust, dust or ashes. Therefore, you have, uh, have those words that I speak on Ash Wednesday. From the ashes you come, the ashes you return to dust. The dust you come, I mean, from dust you come, from dust you return, really will return. Now, as long as we're still in this history mode, I'm going to give you one more, one more lesson. How about Shrove Tuesday? Who's familiar with Shrove Tuesday? We don't celebrate that much, and it used to be celebrated quite often. But what's it all about? Well, that's the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday. That's when it's celebrated. And it's usually a pancake breakfast or whatever. You've, you've probably seen some of those advertised. But here's what, what it's all about. It's an often celebrated because the people that didn't have refrigeration and everything, you had needed to use up the food like eggs and dairy before they went into 40 days of fasting. So that's what that was all about. I bet you all didn't know that. I didn't know that. So, so anyway, so, and here's one more fact. Shrove Tuesday is also called Fat Tuesday, or Mardi Gras. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's get on.
on the show here. Enough history. <laughs> so what what does that mean to bring us <coughs> what's it about? That has always been known to me, and maybe to you too, as a season where Christians are urged to observe a period of fasting, repentance, moderation, self-denial, and spiritual discipline. The purpose of the Lenten season is to set aside time for reflection of Jesus Christ, to consider his suffering and his sacrifice, his death, his life, burial, and resurrection. Many people start, start out by attempting to give up something. Start out that way. <laughs> For the vast majority, at least to the people I know that I've met, giving, giving up doesn't last very long. It doesn't last a whole 40 days for sure. Also, you pr probably most of you know that strict observers of what do not eat meat on Fridays. They eat fish. People often try to give up things like a habit, like smoking or watching TV, swearing, and as I mentioned before, the food or drink, such as sweets, chocolate, and coffee. Now, Susan, Susan encouraged us to eat. It wasn't good for those that are trying to go up. Uh, that never worked well for me, so I'm going to eat them soon. Yeah. I'm more into actions like adding or increasing time, like reading the Bible or spending more time to, in prayer to draw near to God. That's where I find myself trying to do that, trying. Sometimes I'm successful, sometimes I'm not. Perfect. But to go all these spiritual disciplines is to strengthen the faith of the observer and develop a closer relationship to God. It's not about giving up something. It's about drawing closer to God. If you really feel it's not right unless you fast for something, doing a monthly here's a few good reasons, as shared by Pope Francis. It's been going on along on Facebook, so I covered them down. They're, they're pretty good. Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. That's on your hand up. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your heart with joy. Fast from selfishness, selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so you can have time to listen to what other people are saying, what God is saying. Now let's get away from the history lesson and get on to something more relevant in our daily lives. Like I said, after a high point in this earth, his earthly, earthly life, after he was baptized by John, Jesus says he went out, or it tells in scripture that Jesus went out and spent 40 days in the wilderness. While he was there, Satan did everything he could to tempt Jesus. You remember that? As we know, Jesus was without, without sin, so all of Satan's attempts were unsuccessful. But now during these four days of life, we are all on our own, but in our own wilderness. In our own. We're together in the land. But the wilderness is our own. We have our own things to deal with. All Christians are in the Lenten season together, but as I just said, we're all alone. Each one of us has our own story to write, and we will face our own temptations. What will they be? How will we deal with these situations at the grocery store, at Walmart, or on the trials of the chicken and biscuit dinner, or all their works, or the book club? How about that, Doug? Yeah. Uh, all those trials and tribulations? How are we going to deal with them? How do we deal with the withdrawal and disappointment with the football season that end of the day? <laughs> I was happy. <laughs> how do you deal with keeping up with Ann and Elsie and, and all that kind of stuff? I, I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. Uh, and Crystal with the children's programs at school and the dragons that are going down the hallways. And all that <laughs> yeah. <kind of> stuff. <laughs> we all have our challenges. Marie Louise and all the baking, right? Right? And your 
grandchild and your daughter, which we just shared, and so with their sunshine schedule, right? Buying <laughs> time and your dad substituting in school and promoting our church and topping Gary's experiences, right? <laughs> Gary, Gary goes to Walmart just to hear those stories. <laughs> or McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and Marty with a keyboard. Sometimes it doesn't even turn on, right? right? Sometimes it stops by itself. Yeah. <laughs> it does. It's weird. Well, how do we all manage? And Pat, I know, I'm sure you have your own challenges. I do too, more than, more than I can list here. And then we're challenged with Bonnie being with us occasionally. Right. <laughs> so I think I've touched most of most of you. So welcome today. I won't I won't challenge you to anything. You can do. <laughs> but uh, having nothing, let's see. Uh, where am I? Well, we're going to. I, I turned the page here too far. But uh, let's see. Let's let's, let's uh, all of our. There's one trial after another. <laughs> like all of our questions, we need answers, and we can find them in God's Word. Let's turn now to a Bible reading. We're going to turn to 2 Corinthians. It's on page 1799 and goes to 1780 in your Bible. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 through 6, 10. So I encourage you to follow along. These aren't my words. These are God's words. But they're meant for us. Living. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf to be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain. For he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time for God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. Now we're going to hear about Paul's hardships. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere, in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine, yet regarded as impostors, known, yet regarded as unknown, dying, and yet we live on, beaten, and not, yet not killed, sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, poor, yet making many rich, having nothing, and yet possessing everything. Having nothing, and realizing that we still have Jesus to survive, it's what we need to do. It's a place of true peace and happiness. Let me ramble on about it. You know I ramble. I've always been blessed for having what I need, but I truly confess there have been times I didn't really have much. I lived far away from my friends, but I had more because of it. Does that make sense? I had all kinds of God's creatures around me, all around me. Some I would treasure as pets for a while. My mother didn't appreciate all this stuff. But I had snakes, frogs, squirrels, chipmunks, mice, turtles, and even raccoon in my time. Sometimes I'd sit on the grass under the tree in the stillness and silence as a bird or chipmunk or grasshopper would cross over my pants leg or on my leg. It was in this setting, like in a setting like this, that I found the meaning and the, the meaning of life and living. What was really important. It's not in the hustle and bustle of human activity. It's with God and his creatures. It's in knowing that he takes care of us all, <clears throat> all of his creation and nothing, and we lack for nothing that we really need. I wonder if that's the type of wilderness that Jesus found himself in when he spent the 40 days. Um, except for Satan's temptations. 
I invite you to turn to another scripture now, this one from Mark. This one's on page 1552 in our Pew Bible. 1552, we're going to start in Mark 1, verses 9 through 15. Mark 1. Starting in verse 9. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness. And he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God is come here. Repent and believe in the good news. Times change, and the world has now changed since those days. Changed a lot. That's not the type of wilderness where I now find myself in, in this period of Lent. However, God and Jesus have not changed. And we still can have all we need without a penny in our pocket or another friend in our world, in the world. We are never in a situation where we have no hope or in dire want when we know Jesus. It may feel like that, but we have. He'll give us what we need if we trust in Him. Because Jesus is all we need as a friend. He is all we need. Let's consider that as we humble ourselves in this period of Lent and not mourn about what we don't have. Let's realize what we do have. We have Jesus, and He is the bread of life. How do I know that? Let me submit a verse or two of testimony. John 6, 35 through 40. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Who comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never go thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All those the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. For I come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the, the will of him who sent me, that I, should, I shall lose none of all those he has given me. None of you will be lost. But raise him up on the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. See, Jesus is going to take care of us no matter what, no matter where we are in our wilderness. In Matthew 6, 25 through 30, he says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. It is not life, is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? one of you, by worrying, had a single hour of your life. And why do you worry about clothes? See the flowers in the field? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you you have little faith. You have little faith. God will take care of you. Just have faith in Him. He's there no matter what. Like I say, in our wilderness, whatever we're going through. Being a Christian is truly like having, like, is living like, and living one, like one is definitely not easy. You know that. I know that. But it's worth it all. We heard Paul's testimony about the things he went through and endured for the honor of living and to share the gospel. Verse 10, 2 Corinthians 6, said it all. Paul said, Sorrow, yet always rejoice. Poor, 
yet making many rich, having nothing, yet possessing everything. Having nothing, yet possessing everything. True, living for Jesus is not easy, but it's worth it all. When we live like that, we have what money can't buy, and nothing on earth can give you. We have nothing but Jesus, and that's everything. That's everything. As we journey through our wilderness through this season of Lent, it's our opportunity to humble ourselves and to take time to find out what God put us here on earth to accomplish. You listen as you go through Lent and draw closer to God. He will help you find a place, a niche, whatever he's called you to do. We already see many of you in action doing things. God's called you here to do something specifically. He's called you into this church. We are small, but we do our part. We're small but mighty, I like to say. As we journey through this season of Lent, let's take it and use it as an opportunity to humble ourselves, to take time to find out what God put us here on this earth to accomplish. What are we missing? Let's talk to God about that during our season of Lent. Is there more? Is there something special that we can do? Something that you can do that no one else can do. Someone you can touch. Someone you can reach out to. You make the call. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your lesson. Thank you for sending this message. This message that we need to draw near to you. And if we do, that you will answer us. Do us to the areas that we're not aware of. Yes. Areas where we can be more of service to you and our community and to our loved ones and to those that are reaching out for answers that only you provide. Lord, give us the light to shine to direct them to you. We don't have the answers, but we know you do. We may have what it takes to bring others to you. So show us what that is. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to turn to 399 in the hymnal. 399 in the hymnal. Why do you back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm back. Yeah, I'm back. Hey, Gary, I'll be back this afternoon. Okay. Yes, we have a gathering this afternoon at 4, and you're all welcome. We're going to have some potluck and do some music and some, some shares and worship, some communion. So it's not for anybody in particular, it's for everybody. And they're a good bunch of people. They well, are. We shall see. Well, we never know. Well, we never know. Thousands around, thousands around from church to church, and this 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 Sunday it's right here at four four p.m. So come and join us.
will take our lives and use us. Use us. Let's go to the benediction. God's worship is full of steadfast love. God will not forgive us. God will wash us clean and lead us on paths of steadfast love and faithfulness. Now go and testify to God's faithful promises. God's covenant is everlasting. Go and follow God's ways. The ways of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. Go proclaim God's good news. The time is now. Turn to God. Amen. Amen. We're the way that God proclaims that to others. So walk those doors and proclaim that. God bless. Have a great day. And stay with me if you can.